the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. The Z-Cam E2. And the Panasonic GH5S. Why am I comparing these three cameras? Well, all three of these cameras were released in 2018. And they all use a dual ISO sensor that, if not exactly the same, is from the same family of Sony-made sensors. Let's look at some comparisons. My goal with this video is to show how these cameras are similar or different. Uh, I'm not trying to make some really beautiful shots. This isn't a demo reel. I'm not showing off what these cameras can do. I'm showing how they are different as far as the color, the image, how they edit, the noise. And in some other videos, I'll get into high frame rates, the physical differences, and I might cover chroma key examples. So what I've done is I've performed uh, a relatively simple color grade on these. I was trying to match them just to see whether I could match them. Some scenes match pretty well, others don't match very well at all. You'll see throughout this video that the Blackmagic has a red push, is what I call it. It's in more of the shadows, and it's, it's rather hard to adjust if you want to eliminate it. I, I hear a lot about the Blackmagic color science, and I think, well, maybe this red push is one of those things that make people like that color. I'm not really sure. In this carousel scene, I struggled to pull down some of the reds out of the Blackmagic RAW footage. That light on the wall in the back, it should be orange, it was red, and you can still see a bit of red in the shadows. Right towards the end, the girl, the little girl with the pink coat, that pink coat was just not matching the other two cameras, and it just didn't look quite right. It was just the wrong color. Here in this side by side, you can see that they match pretty well. It's just in in some areas, like in you know the sh shadows or the midtones or the highlights, you'll notice each camera has its own characteristic. The colors are just slightly different. You could spend a lot of time trying to match those up, and you could get pretty close. In this scene with the performer with the hula hoops, uh, everything matches fairly well. Uh, I noticed that the hula hoop on the top and the the black magic took on kind of a purple color, whereas the other ones were orange. And also in his pants, you can see there's some differences. Of course, the black magic has a little bit of, bit of that red push in the, in the shadows there. This scene of the clock tower tells us a lot about the differences in the color. You'll see that down in the shadows, even though like, the sky looks the same, the shadows are very different. That bridge, I can't make it match without making something else not match, if that makes sense. You know, you, you can pick and choose what part of the image draws you know, your eye the most and try to balance that, and that's the easiest thing to do. You, you could also still spend a lot of time trying to match all these shots together, and you'd probably get pretty close if you spent enough time doing it. You'll notice that the clock tower itself looks different. Again, the Black Magic has a red push that the other two don't. Here the magenta in the E2 starts to stand out. You'll see it in the gray dasher near the ice. If I try to remove that, go green, the rest of the image shifts and it looks unpleasant. So it's just really hard to narrow that one down. The GH5S is quite neutral here. If anything, it's just a little yellow. There's an interesting point to make that if you don't have something to compare the black magic to directly, then you might not notice the red push. And maybe that's why I don't hear anybody talking about it. Side by side with these two cameras, the red in the black magic starts to become apparent. And in the next clip, you'll see where it becomes a problem. Concert lighting is always very tricky. You've got reds and blues and greens and really strong lights that just make everything look funky. And here, the red in the black magic is quite strong and it's really, really hard to, to remove. In fact, I tried and it just made everything look really weird. So now side by side, you can see how the red and the black magic really stands out. The E2 and the GH5S actually look pretty similar, except for the guitar player's coat on the right. It's just a really different color on the GH5. I'm actually not sure what the correct color is for that coat. That's the part of the problem when you're shooting concerts is with all those lights, you don't know what to white balance off of. I did try to match the, the sign in the background. The name of the band is called Rub. And so the sign is pretty close in all three, but you can see how everything else is just different. In this scene of the gondola, I can actually make all three cameras match fairly well. 
This is actually a really good time to talk about the benefits of RAW, especially when it comes to exposure. We have a very dynamic scene here in that we have some blacks in the foregrounds that are in the shadow, and in the background we have a lot of highlights. The sun is just pounding on the building over here on the right-hand side, and in all three with this current exposure, that building is overexposed. It's, it's blown out. It's lost detail. But I'm going to show you here that with RAW, I can pull that down so much that it, you'll see that every bit of detail is still there. So here I'm in DaVinci Resolve, here's that clip of the gondola, and I'm just going to slide, here's the exposure I had in my, my edit, I'm going to slide the exposure slider down here, and you'll watch that building on the right start to get detail back. You'll see my waveform over here that all this information is still there, and it's, it's not clipped at all, it's, it's just waiting in the, in the highlights. Of course, how do you pull down the highlights and still get all of your, your shadows? That's, that's a bit of a challenge. If I try pushing this up, let's see what happens. Oh, yeah. It's, it's it's fighting the shadows, the highlights now, though. So you can see how the highlights are starting to blow out a, a, a little bit again. So, but man, look at the look at the range you have in the raw. It's a little different story when you have a compressed file. Here we're looking at some ungraded footage, and I just want to show you how different the cameras are in terms of their native ISOs. So apparently, camera manufacturers don't follow the same rules when it comes to establishing ISO levels. Uh, we can see that these are relatively uh, the, the same exposure, and yet their ISOs are very different. Blackmagic's at 400, the E2 is at 160, and the GH5S is at 800. They're using different ways of determining what the ISO is. So here's a test that some of you asked me for. Uh, shadow recovery, what we do is we start with a proper exposure, which is what we have here, and then I begin to drop the aperture on the lens one stop at a time and uh, we uh, bring it back up in post to see how well the shadows recover. Mostly you're gonna see noise and some color shifts. So we can see here at one stop down, it's not too bad. Maybe just a little bit of noise. Um, the colors haven't shifted too much. As so we go two stops down, we can see that we have a little bit more noise. Again, maybe just a slight color shift, but not too terrible, mostly just noise. The uh, black magic being raw uh, has recovered fairly well. There's not much shift in color at all. Now three stops down, we're starting to see some pretty bad results here. The E2 and the GH5S have these really crushed blacks. Uh, the colors have shifted quite a bit. The black magic is noisier than it was before, of course, but the colors are still pretty good. And then at four stops down, they're all pretty bad. The black magic has that red, green, blue noise all over. Uh, the E2 and the GH5S are just really crushed and the colors are just tweaked. This is really unusable. Now I've switched the black magic over to ProRes and we can see how it compares to the RAW. So again, here at proper exposure, and then one stop down, two stops down, a little bit noisier. The ProRes is actually holding up pretty well compared to the E2, which is already getting crushed. Now at three stops down, we start to see a lot more noise in the ProRes, but the colors are still not too bad. The E2 is looking very crushed. And at four stops down, we see a lot of uh, red noise in the, in the ProRes, and it's, it's pretty ugly. So who doesn't love a good rolling shutter test, right? So here I've got all three cameras lined up and they're all synced, they're all on the same mount, so that when I move, they all move at the same time. And we can see that they all show a rolling shutter. It shows up as uh, diagonal lines. Um, the Blackmagic and the GH5S look relatively similar. I think just a slight edge to the GH5S is the E2 has significantly more. It's like double the amount of rolling shutter. Now here's a good night shot showing the differences between the cameras. Still looking fairly similar between the, the three of them. Uh, that red sign in the middle of the 30% off is a little different. It's more red, of course, than the black magic. There was a difference in focus between these three shots, so that can account for some of the difference in the sharpness. Zooming into 300% to look at the noise, we can see the familiar black magic raw noise. It's a little more unrefined, just red, greens, and blues. The E2 it looks like I'm seeing some compression artifacts maybe. Um, the noise is pretty clean. There is uh, some noise reduction going on in camera. And Zcam uh, has gone to length to explain what they do with that noise reduction if you dig through their Facebook group. The GH5S looks pretty good. It has a smooth noise that hasn't sacrificed any sharpness. Now you might think this is the same clip, but oh, look, it's not. It's two different clips split right up the middle. That's how well the RAW and the ProRes match from this camera. Uh, it didn't take a whole lot of work. I just put them together and made some exposure adjustments and 
yeah, voila, it matches pretty darn well. So as long as you don't need to pull down some crazy highlights or something, you can use ProRes and, and do really well with it. Here I've zoomed in 300% so you can see the difference in the noise pattern. The RAW is much more defined, whereas the ProRes is much smoother looking. Um, this would indicate that there is some noise reduction going on in camera for ProRes. I want to take this moment to talk about RAW in DaVinci Resolve. Now, I am in no way an expert uh, in RAW. This is the first camera that I've owned that shoots uh, video in RAW format, so take this for what it's worth. So this is a scene of a, the ice rink here, RAW on the left, ProRes on the right, and DaVinci Resolve gives you a number of options on how you want to process this RAW. So this is Cinema DNG, uh, and you can decode it using the details that are in the clip, so it's going to say, hey, I'm a Blackmagic camera, I'm using the film log profile. Um, if I say Cinema DNG default, everything gets locked out, and this is basically just um, DaVinci's interpretation of what Cinema DNG should look like. If I say camera metadata, it's going to pick up, again, the Blackmagic, I'm using the film profile, and again, it grays out all the options. If I say project, I've set that to Rec. 709 for Cinema DNG, and you can see when I make these selections, the image doesn't actually change, which is kind of strange. I don't fully understand why. Um, I would think that changing it to the Blackmagic color settings, that it would look a little different than the default Cinema DNG. So it seems like I need to do a little bit more research to understand what those settings are doing. When I select clip, it's going to use the settings that I set. So the color temperature, the tint, uh, the lift, I've made some adjustments here. You can even set the ISO. Depending on whether you were on the lower ISO setting or the upper ISO setting, it limits you to that range. This was in the upper ISO setting, so the native would be 3200 ISO. So here's that same clip, and you can see that there are some differences between RAW and ProRes. The building has a different color of orange or red. Uh, the ProRes looks more orange, whereas the uh, RAW is more of a red color. Everything else looks fairly similar. Um, there's just a slight difference in the, the white balance between the two. So they don't always match perfectly, which means there is something different going on with RAW compared to ProRes. And again, zoomed in 300%, we see a difference in the noise patterns. The uh, noise in the RAW is more defined, whereas the ProRes is smoother. And here's a side-by-side -side with all three cameras. I've paused it here to talk about this plaid jacket. We can see that it's different on the E2 than it is on the Blackmagic and the GH5S. And uh, it's not something I could really correct. If I tried, um, I would push the skin tones into an odd color. So it, they're just going to be a little different here. Uh, we'll notice that also the red brick building in the background, it's more similar between the E2 and the GH5S than it is the uh, Black Magic, and also the green sign on the top, it's again different on all three. Just there's little differences in different areas and trying to match those up is, is pretty difficult. You could spend a lot of time and maybe you can get them to all look very consistent, but uh, it's, it's a challenge. And I've paused here once again to talk about this orange jacket. It's a neon jacket, it's very bright, but we can see that the E2 and the GH5S look relatively similar, but the Black Magic has that red push and it looks dramatically different. So, you know, who's to say what's the correct one? Uh, I'm guessing that it's closer to the orange on the, to the two cameras on the right and not the reddish on the Black Magic. I haven't shown you very much ungraded footage, so here's the Black Magic Raw and that white fuzz around the outside. It was just, I was shooting through a tree. And then here's the E2 Z-Log ungraded footage. And here's the GH5S V-Log ungraded footage. And here they are next to each other ungraded. And by the way, this is the historic 1909 Loof carousel in downtown Spokane. And here it's graded, and it looks pretty good until you see this jacket, and you're like, oh, well that's pretty different. And then just moments later, you have this jacket, and it's also different. And once more, just moments later, we have this jacket, which isn't as different as the other jackets. So it's obvious that these cameras have a more dramatic difference in the red and orange areas than they do in some other colors. Uh, this video went on a little bit longer than I thought it would, so thanks for uh, hanging in there and sticking with me. Keep an eye out for the next video because I'm going to get into high frame rates. So 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second, and 240 frames per second. It's going to be interesting. Leave your comments down below, and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe.